Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Ms. Rivera, Dobbs has really created this patchwork of laws all across the country that make it very difficult for uh, uh, people to access what is really important uh, in terms of their health care. But on IVF in particular, it's created um, uh, real challenges on uh, sort of this patchwork on, on affecting women depending on where they live. Can you discuss that for a minute for me and let me know uh, more specifically what's that doing to the profession as a whole? Thank you, um, Senator. I, I think, you know, the, I, the, the Alabama situation is the tip of the iceberg, and we'll have to see how the rest of it plays out. Um, there are these 11 states with very broad fetal personhood laws. They haven't yet been fully enforced. So we'll have to see what challenges are brought, what those state Supreme Courts decide. But that's the point. Senator Hirono has a point, right? What's, what's happening is that it's, it's been kind of left to the states to decide. Women's fundamental freedoms are being left to be decided state by state. And so, and so let, let me just drill yes. in for this for a second, because many people don't realize that this insecurity or uncertainty is affecting women's access to reproductive care. Yes. And so let's, let's be very specific. Are there, yes or no, doctors, OBGYNs, leaving certain states to go to other states, leaving these holes in the kind of care that individuals can get, that women can get in their communities? Yes, one of the impact in the post Dobbs environment is that there are OBGYNs that are leaving states in areas that are already extremely underserved. So there, there are increasing OBGYN deserts that's happening. And, and are those in wealthy communities? What, what do those communities look like that these deserts exist? Um, it is the disproportionate impact is in communities of color. Let's okay, be very and, clear. In rural areas, um, in, in communities of color who already have trouble accessing um, appropriate reproductive health care. Um, so, you know, and, and this, all of this... It, we're going we're gonna to have to watch the maternal mortality rate very carefully and who it's going to be impacting because I, I think it's going to be increasing in the, over time. It already is increasing. And for the first time in 2021, Latinas had higher maternal mortality rates than white women. And so let's, let's just, I mean, jump into the out, outrage of this. Mm -hmm. The United States of America has one of the highest maternal mortality rates writ large of other industrial nations, correct? That is correct. And, and, and that's for the whole country. But yes. when you start looking at it by race, you see for African-American women that there is almost a four times higher maternal mortality rate. And what you're saying right now, that these laws that are creating this patchwork are further exacerbating the access to maternal health care of African-American women and low-income women. That is correct, and I'll say two more things. One is that there's a big overlap in the worst maternal mortality and infant mortality rates with abortion ban states. And secondly, that criminalization of pregnancy contributes to these poor health outcomes because it deters people from accessing care. And so black women who are most at risk in dying for a childbirth, black women who are most at risk for having low birth weight babies, um, black women who are most likely to have uh, fetal deaths in giving birth are now being put in a situation where their lives are greater at risk, where their babies are at greater risk, where their long-term health care is at greater risk because of all of these laws that are being passed that are restricting access to not just um, maternal care, but even to OBGYNs in the first place. Let me put it this way. Black women in this country are the ones most likely to be staring death in the face because during pregnancy. And so it is so important and critical for them to be able and be in the driver's seat to be making their own reproductive health care decisions. And, and, and this is the last point. The, the outreach is that a lot of these laws, the women that are both most being scrutinized over miscarriages, the women that are being most scrutinized over the idea that their lives are threatened because of their pregnancy. You see disproportionately, is it true or not, that these are African-American women and low-income women? 
So, sir, so on, on the um, criminalization of pregnancy, um, black women are certainly overrepresented in the number of people who are being charged with crimes. Um, but the, the biggest impact, we actually have more poor white women who are being charged and arrested for supposed harm to fetuses. So this, this is also a, 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 a situation of poverty, right, of who is poor and who is a person of color. So person, people of color, low-income women, um, poor women yes. are facing the brunt of these laws that are often ending up putting their lives their, their health and their well-being greater at risk and also putting them at greater risk uh, for, uh, 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 for uh, low birth weight babies, in, uh, fetal deaths, as well as uh, maternal mortality. That is correct, and also being criminalized and put in prison. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Senator Booker. 